This is Public Resource. is the TDM Today Show, starring Roger Magoulas. Hey, Roger, how are you? Good, great to see you, Carl. Good, good to see you, good to see you. So listen, I've been thinking about this searching for plants thing, and that seems difficult because you have plants, but then the plant names have abbreviations and they have acronyms and they have vernacular names. So how do you search for, you know, something like plants in, in a corpus this big? Right. And I think what's, what's good about this is it's actually going to be true of a lot of scientific terms where there's shorthands and so forth. So anything that we learn about plants, I think, will be pretty much uh, useful for anything else. So what we see with plant names is, you know, getting back to Linnaeus, uh, that there's certain amount of Latin in them. And because some of those Latin words are long, there's a lot of shorthands. And in certain plant families, in fact, those shorthands are pretty common. Um, so what it meant was taking a look through the plant names and trying to look for patterns that made sense, maybe looking through a couple of documents to see how they're often um, put in there, uh, you know, how people refer to them, and then coming up with a, a kind of a synonym for the plant that would be likely to get a good hit on what um, the plant is. And sometimes there might be spaces Space is probably the right word. There'd be words in between the words. And so we have to think, too, about how the plant name might most often be there. And one of the things that we did with that is we actually do searches, like in a way, multiple searches for the instances of the different tokens that make up the plant name. So this way, if they're a bit far apart, it'll still pull it. Now, that might mean there's a couple false positives, but we, I thought that was better than missing some things just because there was something in between. Uh, the other thing is that a lot of plants have a person's name in them. And of course, names are a funny entity, called entities. And I had to think about that because if there's like initials in the name, I tended to not use the initials on the assumption that the name was probably good enough uh, that's in there. The other funny thing, and this is just an efficiency thing, is sometimes there's a family of plants and it'll have one name and then like there's a genus name, a plant name, and then a subspecies name, which is the same as the plant name. So I need to take that out because I really, there would be a double search for that uh, second name. So you can't just take your master list of plants and shove it into the SQL engine and get your results back, right? You did you have to hand tune every single plant name search uh, by by hand? You have to look at it and say, "Gee, maybe I'll look for this, maybe I'll look for that." Or this, how does it scale? Yeah, and actually, it's not too bad because we're look, I was really looking for patterns. So an example is in the uh, list of names I had, the uh, I guess it'd be an abbreviation SSP stood for subspecies. Well, I don't really care if the word subspecies or some abbreviation or whatever is in there. I just want to know if the three names are there because that's likely going to be a hit, a good search result for what the person is looking for. So what it meant is looking through, most of them are fine. Most of them are two words and those are the two words. They're not the same. It all works fine. So the tuning, it's not a huge burden, but it is a bit of a burden. And I think over time, we'll be able to develop kind of better rules around this. You know, in the plant world, well, this SSP is something that's there a lot. We'll also probably figure out the letter L is there a lot. And I don't even know what the L stood for, but it's fairly common. Do I need to look for a sing single letter, letter L as a word or not? Does that add like a, a better um, like focus on the articles that make sense. And at this point, I don't really know the answer to that. I've left it in, and then we can do some research now that we've got articles and see how, you know, how that worked. So this is a semi-manual process. Is this something that machine learning could have solved for you, or, or is this something that really requires a human to be, be working with it? Uh, actually, with some training, I think we, there can be some machine learning that work with this. Uh, I think I've brought up before the concept of word embeddings. 
and transformers. And what you're looking for there is similarities. And given that our hits are correct, and with some, it'd be supervised training, which means a human is going in, and we can look at a couple of plants and the reports that we pulled up and see how did it work out. That becomes training. And then you can start doing things that allow you to maybe search in this less, less human intervention over time. It's going to take a lot of computation to get there. I know that. They say the hardest part of big data is cleaning up your data. Um, and it sounds like that's what you've been doing with plant names. Um, so. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And, and just as you go through this stuff, you also just see things there. And the, um, the corpus we're looking through, some of the corpuses are kind of bad. Or someone's got a last name with the plant name. Or there's two authors with two of the plant names. And it has nothing to do with the plant, it just so happens right, that that's there. Another thing is ambiguous terms. There is a genus called laser. Well, you can imagine there's a lot of false positive hits on laser. And, you know, so while I didn't do it this round, you can imagine that there's an easy way to filter out the ones that are about the light amplification laser as opposed to the plant uh, genus laser. So all those things are just part of actually why data is really more about the, and calling it quality, but just the condition the data is in, and even the condition the search terms are in, has a big effect on, on how things come out. And that's, you know, that joke, 80% of data scientists' time is spent cleaning up the data, and 20% of the time is spent complaining about the 80% of the time they're cleaning up data. Well, there you have it. Big data is messy data. Thank you very much, Roger Magulis. This has been the TDM Today Show. Thank you. Our work at Public Resource is made possible by a generous grant from Arcadia. Arcadia, a charitable fund of Lisbeth Rousing and Peter Baldwin. Additional support provided by contributions from citizens like you. Thank you for your support. Public Resource is a 501c3 nonprofit corporation with headquarters in the state of California and dedicated to the principle that access to knowledge is a human right.